But there's the a reason why it's still called the music business. Bruh, I'm in like here to make cats, good business. These cats want the number one album. Like they don't want to lose to their peer or their OG. Like they want Wayne the number okay one album. Losing Wayne, Nikki, Wayne, Wayne is all right. He Wayne, okay yeah, losing Wayne to Nikki, is okay. Bro. Like if Nicki Stop. get the number one album, he go, that's he, good. That's, the team wins, bro. I get the number two, that's good. That's my artist at the end of the day. Yo, Rap Life Review, we here, man. Uh, Nadeska's on assignment. Eddie's here, Lo is here, I'm Ebro, the Rap Life Review. We sit down each week, talk about what's going on in hip hop, talk about the culture. Uh, make sure you uh, check out the Rap Life playlist available on Apple Music. Let's start with the new music out, City Girls. Uh, we gotta talk. The rollout on this was a little, how dare I say, not fulfilling. Non-existent. Mm. It came, mm. it like dropped out of, like it was rushed. They I feel like this was rushed. And now maybe it's because uh, Young Miami got things going on. They individually doing things. JT just announced she going solo. So maybe this was one of those albums that was fulfilling. They Maybe they had an obligation to fulfill. I know they friends and family and all that. Right. But maybe this was one of those albums they just had to put out. Is this the time to like, you know, announce this one's going that way, this one's going that way? No, JT is definitely doing a solo. She announced right. that. Right, okay, so like I... The way you probably could have did it is when you both announce after this album, we're going solo. Work that into the campaign. Work oh, you that mean into, you mean build make that part of the build? Make up. that part of the rollout. After this, the city girls are going in different cities. <laughs> oh God, no. That was, oh, no. No, I'm Yo, just leave saying, comments no, on that. No, yeah, that was no, terrible. I'm just no, saying, no. like, there was nothing to attract us to the album. There was no promo. There was no you know, content. There was nothing. There was no interviews. There was no so now, show. Now, there was now, there was nothing. Now maybe they're gonna be doing interviews after the album's already. All right, out. well I can't save it, bro. We don't give a fuck now. Wait, it's already over. Grand opening. Grand. I'm I mean, just saying, nah, like, we I mean, don't, like we don't even know what like that, we don't know what song to pick from. We don't know what song, what song to gravitate to. I mean, there's to. things on there I like. There's definitely things on there that sound. I would have hoped they would have told us. I would have hoped they would have yeah, promoted. Man. I would have hoped wow. they would have gave yeah. us. Yeah. You know, the Damn. ending of direction Damn. where it shook. Cause they deserve it. Serious. No, he's like, serious. He's serious. All right, so we don't take. Yeah. Right, so when we take them, them, the serious. You know what I mean? Like we can't. No, we feel. We don't we, take they serious. Yeah, no, we and, take them serious. Listen, like, I'm like, just like, they deserve a little bit more you. than we what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, we hear you. That, that's on I them. Know, Tweet I, I, about I, I, it. Let us let us know. Like no, I, I, I can't help what they promote. Like they didn't promote. No, I'm just saying. It there was nothing. Everybody's so shocked, and I'm like, how y'all this like removed the why the it's not moving because there was nothing done. Look, now, it's they, only been a few days. They got 20 okay. more records on there. I think it's too many records. I think there's definitely records on there that sound like they've been sitting on them for a long time. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a fan of City Girls um, since their first project. As far as, you know, that sound, I feel like, you know, JT is one of the best rappers in that sound specifically and one of the best female rappers out there. Like, when you really listen to how she puts what she, like, her style of doing shit, like, she could, she's going to take it very far. Mm. Um, and then we'll see what this solo project is sounding like. Um, but I agree with you, Lo. The rollout definitely feels like it was rushed. And it there feels wasn't, like there was, nothing, there was, it was, was no, non-existent. There was no rollout. Yeah, it was yeah. non-existent. Yeah. It was non-existent. Um, there's a Gucci Mane album out there. He's seeing movement with that Mike Will Made a J. Cole joint that's out there. So that rollout was decent. Uh, my man Trey The Truth, yeah. uh, who wants to come on the program, we need to have him up to talk about Stuck in Motion. Hero. Hero Trey The Truth. There you go. Uh, what'd you call him? Hero? He's a hero, man. Like oh, yeah. he's, he's the one to do. He puts the work in, man. He don't talk about it. He don't rap about it. He yeah. just does it. No, he been outside putting in real King work. Of city. Uh, Rick Ross, Meek Mill, single fire. Another fire single from those two. Um, lyrical, easy, sampling, hove. Um, now speaking of rollouts, we constantly hearing about this album slated to drop November tenth. Too good to be true. Mm -hmm. So I do think there is something to the proper setup. Shout out to Lola Brooke, too. Another great single from her, Pit Stop, uh, with French Montana, the last one with Bryson Tiller's doing well. So she's pacing herself well. And shout out to 2 Chains and Lil Wayne. Speaking of rollouts, that They're pressure work is hot. The Lil Wayne's our co-worker right now. Oh, yeah. Young Money Radio yeah, back. Yeah. Young Money right? Lil Wayne's in the studio. He's out here giving us content. He's giving us new music. And I just want to shout out Wayne, man, because we talk about it over and over again, man. The, the the Wayne comeback legacy has been real, bro. Like, Wayne has about 
four or five different career arcs. And we're on one of the better versions of the career arc right now where he gets to be a legend, but he still will have you on a song with him and he'll eat your ass alive. And I appreciate him for that, man. Wait, so is this, this is Welcome to Collie Grove, but it's technically No, it's Collie Grove 2, yeah. But it's, it's a sequel. Oh God, yeah, it's yes. a sequel. But there's Got a it. record on there with somebody that is now making they come back again. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. I, don't, I just love that the older cats can have that space now where it's like if you want the music from them, they can release it. And then cats like us can find it, man. Especially, you know, two chains, another legend. They in the know game. how to present their music because back in the day they had to present their music. So they have fun. But with I think that's part of music. the work part. I think we could spend some time talking about the actual work of the game, right? It's not mm -hmm. just putting songs up on the internet. You know, because there is a generation that had a lot of success yeah. just using social media and the internet right. and not actually having to go out and remind people, you know, that, and have conversations yeah. about the product, yeah. right? So there is a generation that hasn't had to do that. There are artists that came out where literally they just threw stuff out, put up a post on social, and people streamed it. They had success doing that, but I don't know if that's sustainable. If your personality cannot connect to your content, and you can't explain why your content is the way it is, you can't sustain that success. Like you said, like put out shit, they put out a post, the songs go, it's fun. But the longevity is not there without the personality to connect to the content. If the bridge is I, not there, it's not gonna work. I think it's just the evolution of how you promote music though. It don't have to be neither nor. It can be a combination of one or it can be another. Some people are gonna be successful going forward just putting their music on the internet. It's just about how you do it. It's a case by case well, basis. Well I guess it's also to your point defining what success is for that, you. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, and and at first for some of them, that's phase. We talk about career arcs and the phase wanes on. For some of them, this is phase one of their success. Like they're gonna just release snip, snippets and go on IG live and have our conversations. I don't think it's bad. It's just different. Like this whole music landscape, it's changed from when it was you know created. Like when music got popular, like thing in the '30s or the '40s when the mob was in the music business to what it is now. It's all part of the evolution. You can do it the old school way, like Lil Wayne and Two Chains is doing, doing radio shows and doing promos. And doing buildups, or you can do it. You could take an example from like somebody like um, Frank Ocean, who just would drop music, but he also he built a legacy through that. But he's always been kind of elusive, and you can be successful. It's just the music. The music always has to speak. If the music don't connect, none of that other stuff's gonna work, regardless. But in the case of like we're talking about the city girls and being frustrated with what we see their rollout being, we don't know how they actually feel because we haven't heard about it. They don't from do that. Them, I, I don't right? think they give Yet. a fuck. We'll see. Let's see. Maybe they, maybe they're because they all have both have a bunch of different shit going on. Maybe they couldn't get the schedules together and they had to drop it now. Who knows? Let's let's wait and see, right? However you feel about it. But the reason I bring that up is because it seems as if take somebody like an Offset who's having tremendous success right now, uh, top five album still in Apple Music, proper rollout. We heard from him. Right, he was doing interviews, freestyles, content, and the album people responded well to. One plus one. But even Drake. One plus one equals two. But even Drake had a, nah, as big that, as he is, he had a rollout too, though. But my point is, he had a rollout. He had a date. He put out the album. He yeah. put out the artwork from his son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had content. Yeah, like yeah. he was still do, doing doing things. On tour. And he was on tour. Right. right? So it, it was as big as Drake is. It ain't still no just. Here. I'm gonna just throw it out. Right. Right. All late. They were just like here. We were like here what? We're, but we're, like what the? But Drake will do that too though. Like let's not he's act like it. Drake won't do the. Yeah, he's he done. He'll because he can. But yeah, they can't. Yeah, you're right. He's Drake. Like he can do that. Yeah, they can't. Like uh, Adele can do that. Beyonce can do that. Drake can do that. Everybody can't do that. Everybody can't Offset do that. been out there working. All Work, working. Offset and still been working. working. His, asshole. his ass. I wouldn't be dog. surprised if we hear a, an announcement for a tour, a solo tour. I hope we do. Now. Um, the internet's making something of this. I think it's a nothing burger, but I'm gonna point to it. The colleague, Welcome to Collie Grove, Wayne, Two Chains album drops the same day. Apparently, I guess Nicki's keeping the date. I don't know. Uh, as Nicki Minaj is set to release Pink Friday too. Okay, is that something? Here's why it could be something. Nicki was talking about before how she was on the Drake album. She said it. Nikki was talking about it. She wasn't on the Drake album. Mm. She That's said that. Weird. 
She said it from Nicki's mouth. And then she that, the she Drake album came out, and I did see people saying maybe the song is on Nicki's album. But she was saying she was on the Drake album. Right. Now, Lil Wayne's dropping an album. Like, and, and like, let's not act like, I don't know their relationship. I don't know if they're best friends. I don't know what the case is. But generally, if you have a certain level of respect for an artist or a peer, you might move it a week, you know, or so, just to give them like a little bit of space. For them both to come out on the same day, it could very well be nothing, but it would lead to the fact of like, damn, neither one of y'all kind of want to move. That just seems a little odd considering I mean, they're, where they're, y'all came from. They're feeding from. two different demographics. Like, Nikki's fans aren't necessarily going to lean over to Wayne and 2 Chainz. Like, they, they're not, it's not going to cross paths. Like, so yeah, still, and also you can, you can, this, now, feeding, I've seen this strategy before. This was not necessarily in the streamer era, but in the in the record store era, where artists would drop on the same day because people was gonna be in the stores. They looking for the music. So it creates a conversation, it, create, it creates its own marketing moment that these things are happening at the same time. Cause people can multitask. Like people yeah. will listen to multiple albums yeah. in the same day, especially if, as you pointed out, they're sonically serving different Ideas and 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 demo. That's an easy money. Like, and you, this is all under what Young Money. Yeah, so it's still all like the the, they get, the house they, money is still they, like, yeah, the, the house, house money still getting fed. Paid. Yeah, like, money, so, they, it's all yeah, like, let's double play. down. Like, fuck it. All right, Wayne and Two Chains, you got it. All right, Nikki over. Here. Let's cut. Let's cut it for a second. This is hip hop. It's competitive. These people still want to say they got the number one album. Like, but, but there's a still, reason it's, it's still called the music business. Bruh, I'm in like here to make cats, good business. These cats want the number one album. Like, they don't want to lose to their peer or their OG. Like, they want Wayne the number okay one album. Losing Wayne, Nikki, Wayne, Wayne is all right. He Wayne, okay yeah, losing Wayne Nikki, is okay. Bro. Like, if Nicki Stop. get the number one album, he gonna, that's he, good. That's, the team wins, bro. I get the number two, that's good. That's my artist at the end of the day. Like, I don't know what their deal is, but I know... It's known, people have been known to move dates just at a little no, level of respect. I, I'm, I, don't know. I agree with what you're saying, but I still think, I think there's a marketing moment here. This is a like, marketing I think play. This is an saying, opportunity. Is this Barbenheimer? Is the Barbie dropping the Barbie and then Lil Wayne's the Oppenheimer? There you go. It's the Bro, Barbenheimer. Like, this is, you, you you'd got be hard pressed to think, like, oh, yo, there's a problem. This is young money, cash money. Two albums one day. All right, bring home the coins. Keyword cash. Keyword business. I didn't say business, but okay, I that's cool. That works. Business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, that's, all right, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Uh, actually, Offset was talking about numbers being down in hip hop and how the genre is getting boring and needs more showmanship. When I sat down and talked to Offset, mm -hmm. um, we gonna, let's let's see what Offset had to say. No content music ain't catching nobody here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm I'm noticing that like the numbers are down in our genre specifically because I feel like everything is so the same. Like mm -hmm. hearing you talk about entertainment value is very interesting. Clearly you see that, you know, you need to go somewhere to bring people on a journey. Yeah, they want to feel like experience. That's what I always say, like, you got to give a fan an experience. Experience is you, not you on the mic. Like, that shit don't be enough, bro. Then you like taxing on the ticket sales, like, you know what I mean? Okay. On $200 a ticket, but you, I ain't got no production, it ain't no, I feel like a show is like a movie. It's the beginning, middle, conclusion, the end. You gotta have some dialogue and that shit. You gotta have some choreo and that shit. You gotta have some wow moments you gotta have with somebody, everybody in the crowd feeling your painful song. Mm -hmm. The colors and the lasers or the lights of the show is what matter also too. And I just feel like educationally wise, like it's not diving into that and learning that. Mm -hmm. It ain't never too late. And so that's why if you look at the lineup, this is getting thinner and thinner on them lineups. Uh, we got a great conversation. If you missed my convo with Offset, go look for us right now. It's on Apple Music. The number one first week album sales so far this year. Travis Scott, Utopia. Two, for all the dogs, Drake. Drake still dominates the top five slots, even with a Bad Bunny album out. If you on, go on Apple Music right now, still dominate. Number three, Uzi Vert. And there's a significant drop off in first week, though, when you go from... Drake's for all the dogs with 411,000 all the way to uh, Uzi Vert who had 167,000 on the pink tape. And then Rod Wave, Lil Durk, NF, Post Malone, Young Thugs, Business is Business, Gunna, and then uh, Doja Scarlet is still top, it's top 10 for the year. Do you agree with what Offset is saying? Let's, let's do this, right? 
Because people for like the last, what, 30 years, 40 years, since the inception of hip-hop, they want to throw dirt on hip-hop. Say hip-hop's dead. And I just honestly believe hip-hop is in a transitional period right now. It's not a bad thing. Like every now and then a reset happens. Like when, when 50 Cent dropped, that was a reset. Before that, when Dr. Dre dropped, that was a reset. When Kanye, when he started hitting that, that mainstream, that was a reset. Kendrick and, and J. Cole and Drake, all, that was a, it happens, right? Music in general right now is kind of in a transitional period. But it's only hip hop that gets the headlines. We always point to like, look, hip hop numbers are down. People don't like hip hop. But well, music and pause right there, Eddie. The reason that is, I believe, is because of the popularity of hip hop. Because True. they know that hip hop is highly engaged with. So that's the headline because hip hop fans and hip hop itself, as you just articulated a few minutes ago, when we were talking about the last topic, is competitive. Nobody really, really bragged in the news as artists about chart position before hip hop. That was mm -hmm. a thing that really, really started with Diddy and the shiny suit era in the mid nineties. So I just wanted to set the table for that. So, so that I agree with Offset, but let's not act like all genres aren't going through something very similar right now. You have your outliers, like Beyonce's always gonna sell, Taylor Swift, Bad Bunny's, like they're just doing buku numbers. But in general, things are slipping a little bit and all that does is, is it challenges artists, like Offset's saying is, how can I look at this different? Because the same formula is never gonna work forever with anything. That's like right. you're always gonna have to change. Like you're gonna have to evolve. And the next evolution in hip hop is coming very, very soon. So as we sit here and say well, everything that's wrong with it, be patient because there are young and coming artists that are coming out that are like we don't even know who they are yet that are just going to reset this whole thing. But I agree with his statement because I feel like it was stale and we were getting a lot of the same because the, the bar to entry was so easy because all you need is a computer and you can put songs and you can uh, feed directly to your consumer. And then we just stopped caring about bars nah, in general I mean, and wait, everything was okay, fine. Man, it's the hold gatekeeper's right, fault, wait, wait, man. Wait, 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 wait. You know what I'm saying? Wait, wait, the gatekeepers wait. was keeping all this hold talent on, on. away. And, 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 and now that the gatekeepers is out of the way, man, everybody could just run in and everybody deserve a shot, man. Everybody got talent. Everybody's special, man. Everybody. Okay, sarcasm. What, what's, what's the transition that hip hop is going into? Just, I just want to hear like this. I, I, I literally told I you I, don't, he, I think I literally I, said I, I, I don't know. I think there are established artists that are aging, yeah. getting older, yeah. and maybe they're uh, stylistically they're you know kind of uh, plateauing. Dated. Yeah, dated. let's say. Yeah. Um, and then there's you know uh, new new artists that are coming in and with fresh ideas, fresh looks, fresh sounds. You know, et cetera, et cetera. You, like the number one song of Apple Music is the Drake and Yeet song. Right. Yeet has been somebody over the last three years, if you've been paying attention, he's been doing crazy numbers, touring, da da da, da. There's a few artists out there. Destroy Lonely is another. It's kind of like an alti hip hop, mosh pit kind yeah. of rock kind of vibes. Uh, but even when you look at like um, what Griselda's been doing, which brought a different energy. And that's been, I mean, I know that's been going for six, seven years yeah. now, but nonetheless, it's not as if they've peaked as far as, you know, crossing. They haven't had a crossover moment. Right. This might be one of West Side Gun's biggest kind of crossover moment using trap beats and yeah, different yeah. sounds yeah. on the album. Yeah. So I think in that regard, like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you've had artists that have kind of been running it, running it. Um, and then there's some, I think there's some new people coming to the game. I don't think there's a transition. I just think that there's a lack of effort in contributing to the craft of what you love. I think there's a lack of effort because of the consumption, because of how easy it is to be consumed, because how how easy it is to be You think artists are lazy? I think people are just lazy. This is I not just a, said that. No, but, this, but it's not it's a transition. The same thing. But it's not a transition. The, it is, because hip hop not. always resets. The there's always lazy. There's, there, look, From bro, when we were tired, when we to, were tired to of like crafting, pop, pop, to beat pop. selection, Listen, to, bro, to narrating your going, career. Fucking lazy. You don't want to say it like oh, I said no, that. I literally said lazy. Offset was right. But what's going to happen is it's not working now. Like right now, everyone's talking about this year, 2023, and da 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 da. da. And what happens when everyone resets and refocuses? It's kind of like what ha what's happening in streaming right now. What's happening in Marvel? They're like they were milking that Marvel cow, and all of a sudden it wasn't working. And then in Marvel news, they're like, oh, Kevin Feige and all those guys got to lean back and trim the fat and all. Like all that is coming. It had, but it has to. It has to bottom out. 
It's bottoming out right now to the point where everybody, it's not just going to be the artist, it's going to be the business structure in which the way we do this, which way we do it, the labels, A&Rs, all that's going to change because it bottomed out. Like, we are in a transition, and this isn't new because it happens every 10 to 12 years but that in don't, but, that don't ways. but that don't happen until actually put effort into the craft where the labels got to be like, or we got to be like, oh, shit. We got to figure well, out I how think, to really... I think, I think the, the, first of all, the machines, the businesses, the corporations are going to run the machine like an assembly line. Right. Oh, that's what people are buying? Here go 50 more of them. A hundred more of them. Until people stop buying it, then they'll find the next buzzy thing, and then they're going to transition to the next buzzy thing and run up a hundred of those. So both of what y'all saying is true, and y'all are saying the I'm same literally thing. saying what he's saying. He's just like rehashing. Nah, you just using you, you, you just you just being more meticulous and smarter. He's just being emotional. <laughs> Yo, I gotta send a, a rest in peace, man, to uh, Mark the Forty Five King. Um, you know, he was a, a an amazing human, first of all, but second of all, um, you know, part of the flavor unit and a lot of that, you know. Uh, those sounds that came out of Queen Latifah and mm -hmm. all that. But you might best know him for, you know, the Hard Knock Life sample yep. or what we call the Ed Lover Dance or the 900 number, you know that. Um, but people didn't know that he did stand also for Eminem. A lot of people didn't know um, And a lot of other things. So uh, he uh, passed away this week, 62 years old. And uh, we said rest in peace to all the family, friends, and of course, Mark 45 King. Uh, thank you, sir, for your contributions to this culture that we love. Um, and that's been the Rap Life Review. Anything we did? That clip that um, Gail King, Hove. Oh, had true. Public Library, a book of Hove. True. So it's been on the internet. Gail King sets it up nice. Do you want 500000 or a dinner with Hove? And here's what Hove had to say. There's something interesting online, Jay. I'd love to hear what you think about this. If you had a choice between getting paid $500,000 in cash or lunch with Jay-Z, yeah. Which would you choose? You gotta, t you gotta take the money. What, you gonna, what I'm gonna say? Yeah, you know I mean everything now. I'm gonna say no, everything. No, only because people say, well, of course you take you take lunch with Jay Z because the wisdom that you would get from him would would be so uh, beneficial to you. There would yeah. only be a matter. You but, would take the money. Yeah, because you. you got the you got all that in the music for for ten ninety nine. That's a that's a bad deal. I would I wouldn't tell you to cut a bad deal. Like I don't take know. the five hundred thousand. Go buy some albums and listen to the albums. <laughs> it's all there. If, if you, okay. you if you piece it together and really listen to the music for the words for what it is, it's all there. Everything that I said was gonna happen, happened. Everything that I said I wanted to do, I've done. And th there's the blueprint. The blueprint, literally, to me and my life and my journey is is there already. We got that out of the way, so we could quit having this conversation. Because basically, Hove. It's like, bruh. It's there. I done already told y'all what to do. Take the 500. Go buy some albums. And wisely. Go buy some albums. It's right there. I told you what I did. I would like to suggest, though, if you get 500,000, do not do what Hove was doing before he started rapping. <laughs> Leave that part out bricks, of your guys. plan. He lost them bricks. You don't want to do that. Don't 92. do that part. 92. 92 <laughs> bricks. They gone. Yo, 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 you really think he lost 92 bricks? Man, I don't know, bro. I wasn't there. Him and Emory no, in the van talking. in Maryland. I, no, I'm just, I, I wasn't sure. Like, <laughs> Yeah, don't do that part. Right. All the other parts, do that part. You know what? Don't even do that because you ain't got it, y'all. You ain't you ain't Sean Corey Carter. You I don't wonder, have I wanted to bring it. No, up. I was really, I wasn't even talking about the rap part. Don't do that part don't either. Even, if you get 500,000. Oh, because y'all suck? Yeah, y'all suck. Y'all not investors, guys. No, but the art, inve no, art investment, real estate investment, uh, uh, 401k. Hey, 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 be careful with that real estate. <laughs> God <laughs> damn. <laughs> oh, Yo, this, man, you know, this bro. Rap, rap life, life review, man. I didn't tell them to invest with me, though. <laughs> <laughs> Envious. Yo, stop, man. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> What's up? Nadeska here, and if you enjoyed this episode of The Rap Life Review, you can catch me here every week with Loki and Ebro. Subscribe, hit the like button, make sure you never miss an episode, and of course, drop us a comment below, and we'll see you next time on The Rap Life Review.